Hello guys and welcome to this new Blender Grease Pencil development video. Today we talk about a huge upgrade in Grease Pencil rendering, learn how it works, do some render speed tests and see how quality will improve. If you're an old Grease Pencil user, you are surely aware of the anti-aliasing issue Grease Pencil renders always had. We were always promised a fix in the 2.0 era and then came Grease Pencil 3.0 with the same problem problem and no solution in sight. As a workaround we will render in higher resolutions then downscale to reduce the alias and artifacts. Then about a month ago and out of nowhere developer Clément Foucault posted a patch with a new better anti-alias and algorithm for the Grease Pencil Render Engine. The feature will ship with Blender 4.5 that should be released on July the 15th. Of course if you can't wait you can download Blender 4.5 Alpha from the daily releases page and try it right away. In the render tab under Grease Pencil Render you will find two values to decide how anti-aliasing is done. SMAA short for Subpixel Morphological Anti-Aliasing is the old method with a default value of 1. Based on my expertise from reading one article on the subject, this technique 1 blurs the contrast points and 2 recognizes patterns in the form of lines curves and object boundaries, then blurs them in the direction of these lines. SSAA, short for Super Sampling Anti-Aliasing, is what we are looking for. The more you increase the value, the better and slower the render. From what I read, this is the most demanding anti-aliasing algorithm, but the one which offers the highest quality. It works by creating a large image, then down sampling it to a smaller one. This is the only decent decent way to ensure high quality anti-aliasing and interestingly it's the exact same thing we were doing manually as a workaround. So what to do with these values? You can disable SMAA with a value of 0. Then in SSAA put a sample's value greater than 1. Clément Foucault used multiples of 8, 8, 16, 32, but even a value of 2 gives you some anti-aliasing. To disable SSAA enter a value of 1. Can both methods be combined? Yes, but Clément warns that combining SMAA and SSAA may cause over blurring, so do it only when necessary. We'll see that in a second. Are there any disadvantages to the new method? The main disadvantage is slower render time, but I guess it's worth it if it frees you from having to render at a higher resolution, which would also be slow and probably of a lower quality. I will give you the results of my render speed testing in a minute. The other disadvantage is that SSAA doesn't support depth buffer anti-aliasing. I'm not sure what this means, but it's about when a 3D object like a mesh is in front of your grease pencil object. In this case, the boundary between the mesh and grease pencil will have no anti-aliasing if you use SSAA alone. So you'll either have to use SMAA or combine both methods. In an example, Clemo uses a small value of 0.25 in SMAA to avoid over blurring, which seems to do enough anti-aliasing on the edges where the mesh meets grease pencil. Now let's test the rendering speed using files with different levels of complexity. I run the tests on my old Windows 10 machine with a GTX 1050 Ti GPU and 8 GB of RAM. First, let's start with this very simple scene with a Suzanne and two grease pencil rectangles. We are using EV for our renders. One 1080p or full HD frame render time with SMAA at 1 and SSAA disabled was 0.97 seconds. When we disable SMAA and switch to SSAA with 8 samples, render time jumps to 1.34 seconds. That's a difference of 0.37 seconds and an increase of 38% in render time. 
Strangely, when I combined SMAA with SSAA, render time decreased to 1.3 seconds instead of increasing. With 16 SSAA samples, render time was 1.39, but only 1.32 with SMAA enabled, a 5% increase max compared to rendering with 8 samples. With 32 samples, the frame was rendered in 1.72 seconds and 1.93 when SMAA is used. That's an increase between 77% and 99% from the old rendering method method, which means rendering time almost doubled. Now let's compare again with this much more complex scene, you can buy it for $3 from my Gumroad if you want to support the channel and do some testings yourself. With the old SMAA, one 1080p frame is rendered in 0.63 seconds. If we increase the resolution to 2160p, that's 4K, render time is 1.78 seconds. With SSAA, 1080p 8 samples rendering took 2.08 seconds, 2.32 seconds when SMAA is added, an increase of 230 to 268% in render time compared to a normal HD render and 16 to 30% compared to the 4K render. At 16 samples, render time jumped to almost 4 seconds, an increase of 517% from the old method and 119% compared to the 4K render. At 32 samples, now render time is over 7 seconds for a single frame, which means that if your movie took 1 hour to render before, now it will take 12 hours, so depending on your machine, maybe you should go with fewer samples. Now let's compare rendering quality with my gorgeous animated night scene. Bear in mind that video compression is adding its own artifacts to what you see. We first start with an old render, then swipe with an SSAA1. You may want to watch this part on a big screen and repeat it a couple of times to spot all the differences. Then we zoom in to specific areas. Here we can clearly see a difference in the stars. Here you can see how horizontal lines flicker in old renders. Here see how small circles never looked round in the old days. Here more flickering with the lamp lines, but strangely this diagonal edge looks more stable with the old method. Maybe because we are zoomed in? So this is it guys, tell me your thoughts about the testing results, enlighten us if you have more information about how rendering works, send your prayers to the people who are starved and live in hell in Gaza, that's the least we can do, see you in another video, and as always, peace.